Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. 20 travel phrases you should know. Merci. Thank you. Anytime you receive something or someone was nice to you. Merci. Thank you. Excusez-moi. Excuse me. Anytime you bump into someone or if you step on the foot because the metro is crowded or if you need to call for the waiter's attention, use this one. Excusez-moi. Combien ça coûte? How much is this? Yeah, sometimes you won't find the prices on the items you are looking for, especially if you are going to a flea market in France. So just go, ah, this item, how much is it? Cet objet, combien ça coûte? Où est la gare? Where is the train station? This one can be quite convenient. If you are in a big city, where is the metro? Où est le métro? Le wifi est-il gratuit? Is the Wi-Fi free? If you want Wi-Fi in France, maybe some coffee shops now have it. They advertise it on the chalkboard outside. So come inside, we have Wi-Fi. Je voudrais ceci. I'd like this. Oh, I'd like this, please. Je voudrais ceci, s'il vous plaît. If you don't know the name of the item you want in the menu, you can just point and say, Je voudrais ceci. I want this, please. Pourrions-nous avoir le menu, s'il vous plaît? Could we have the menu, please? Usually you have to ask for it. Sometimes the place is very crowded, so ask. Le menu, s'il vous plaît. Could we have the menu, please? Avez-vous des recommandations? Do you have any recommendations? If you are at a bar and want for some cocktail, it can be like, oh, I like something fruity. Do you have any recommendation? J'aimerais quelque chose de fruité. Avez-vous des recommandations? And then the bartender will make you some fancy cocktail. Je suis allergique aux cacahuètes. I'm allergic to peanuts. If you have any allergies, be sure to ask whenever you are going out or trying to eat something. People will be really nice about it. And sometimes it's even on the menu. If you have any allergies, there will be a sign saying, yes, yeah, this contains nut or this contains milk or this contains gluten. And you can make sure that you don't eat something you don't want to ingest. <laughs> Avez-vous des plats végétariens? Do you have any vegetarian dishes? If you are vegetarian or vegan, there will also be a sign very often on the menu saying this dish contains no meat or this is vegan safe, it's made with no animal grease or eggs or milk. Pourrais-je avoir l'addition? Could I have the check? Pourrais-je avoir l'addition, s'il vous plaît? Could I have the check, please? Prenez-vous la carte de crédit? Do you take credit card? Can I pay by credit card? Puis-je payer avec ma carte de crédit? Tiens! Pourriez-vous me prendre en photo, s'il vous plaît? Could you take a picture of me, please? What, you don't have your selfie stick? Come on, that's something every traveler should have. Un, deux, trois, oui, Titi. Je voudrais un siège non fumeur, s'il vous plaît. I'd like to have a non-smoking seat, please. Well, restaurants in France have banned smoking inside for a couple of years now. So every restaurant you go to should be non-smoking. Smoking is only allowed in bars. Good luck with that. Do you have non-smoking seats? Avez-vous des sièges non fumeurs? Pourriez-vous me donner un rabais? Could you give me a discount? Un peu moins cher? A little bit cheaper? This is again if you go to flea market and especially on Sundays, you will have a bunch of sellers selling stuff from their homes. You can negotiate the price a lot over there. And getting an item half price is really common. So you can, yeah. Uh, un peu moins cher. Uh, ou, est-ce que je pourrais avoir un rabais? S'il vous plaît, give me a discount, please. Or make it cheaper, a tiny bit cheaper. Okay, more, more cheap, even, even cheaper, way, way cheaper. Okay, give it to me, free, now. Pourrais-je obtenir un plan? Could I get a map? Plan would be more a map of something you want inside, for example, if you're in a museum. And if you are outside and got lost and go to the information center, for example, you can ask, pourrais-je avoir une carte? Could I get a map? J'ai une réservation. I have a reservation. When you get to a restaurant and have a reservation, they will often ask you at the front desk, so do you have a reservation? Avez-vous une réservation? You can say, yes, I have a reservation. Oui, j'ai une réservation. Puis-je essayer? Can I try this on? Yeah, if you want to try some clothes, you can ask the staff. Puis-je essayer ceci? Can I try this? Parlez-vous anglais? Do you speak English? 
French people aren't really good at speaking English, but they will try their best. So if you find someone and cannot express yourself in French properly and ask them, parlez-vous anglais? Do you speak English? They may say, no, not that much, but no, je, je ne parle pas beaucoup, or je ne parle pas anglais. The most common sentence I learn in every language is A beer, please. Une bière, s'il vous plaît. Anytime it's summer, it's hot, and you want something fresh. Une bière, s'il vous plaît. A beer, please. To go with your nice meal or just to freshen up and chill with friends. Must know expressions for agreeing and disagreeing. Are you ready? C'est vrai, that's true. Yeah, this is just a simple answer for when something is true. C'est vrai can also be a question if um, you want to confirm that someone said something or you are really surprised. C'est vrai? Like, oh, really? Yeah, or we just say it casually. Ah, like, oh, c'est vrai. Or, ah, did you notice the sky was blue today? Oh, tu as remarqué que le ciel était bleu aujourd'hui? Ah, oh, c'est vrai. Oh, that's true. Uh -huh. <laughs> Je crois que oui. I guess so. Do you think the concert is going to be at 8 p.m. today? Yeah, I think so. Tu crois que le concert est à 8 heures ce soir? Ah, oh, je crois que oui. So this is not a 100% sure answer, so you still have to check it. But you are 75 to 80% sure it's true. Absolument, absolutely. That's when you are 100% convinced it's true, or right, or what you're saying. I think we should go with the blue color for the marketing campaign. Absolutely! Je crois que nous devrions choisir le bleu pour la campagne marketing. Absolument! And not the filthy yellow! It's also a really formal and polite manner to say yes. For example, if you're in a fancy hotel and you say, Oh, is the bar on the first floor? And you say, Absolument! Absolutely! Qu'en pensez-vous? What do you think? What do you think about this week's lesson? Leave a comment. Que pensez-vous de la leçon de cette semaine? Laissez-moi un commentaire. What do you think about the food here? Que pensez-vous de la nourriture ici? I think it's really good. Yeah, it's totally cool. Peut-être, maybe. Do you think you will be able to come tonight? Maybe. Est-ce que tu penses que tu pourras venir ce soir? Peut-être. That's 50-50 level of sureness. Je ne pense pas. I don't think so. Do you think you can finish this task before the day is over? I don't think so. Tu penses que tu pourras finir ce travail avant que la journée soit finie? Je ne pense pas. Bien sûr. Of course. Can I have fries with my chicken? Of course. Est-ce que je peux avoir des frites avec mon poulet? Bien sûr. Yes. Oh, mom, can I go out? Maman, est-ce que je peux sortir? Bien sûr. Of course. Just be careful and call mommy when you arrive. J'allais le dire. I was just going to say that. Or sometimes we use... Uh, Tu l'as dit, which is, oh yeah, you, right, you said so. Uh -huh. Oh my God, have you seen Betty new hair color? It's terrible. J'allais le dire. I was just about to say that. Je crains d'être en désaccord. I'm afraid I disagree. I don't like black people. I'm afraid I disagree. <laughs> That's racist, you twat. Je n'aime pas la musique pop. Je crains d'être en désaccord. I don't like pop music. I'm afraid I disagree. Hey, what kind of music do you like, guys? Leave a comment. Aucun doute là-dessus. No doubt about it. Here you are 120% sure. It's true. So use it when you are only really sure. This episode of Weekly Word is going to be awesome. No doubt about it. Cet épisode de French Weekly Word va être super bien. Aucun doute là-dessus. Il va signer le contrat. Aucun doute là-dessus. He is going to sign the contract. No doubt about it. What adjective describes your personality best? Let's go! Intelligent, smart. Intelligent, smart. Are you smart? Êtes-vous intelligent? I'm the smartest! Je suis la plus intelligente. Huh? Or, je suis le plus intelligent, if you are a guy. Emotif, emotional. Emotif, emotional. <laughs> uh, I remember that one time I got really emotional because uh, we, we ate all the apples and there was the last apple standing by itself and I got really sad for the apple because the apple was all alone. Hashtag true story. Les films me rendent émotif. Movies make me emotional. Uh, and then when the guy loves the girl but he dies in the end and then they cannot be together ever again like in the bridges of Madison Country, this was super sad and made me emotional. What makes you emotional? 
Qu'est-ce qui vous rend émotif Leave a comment and tell me. <laughs> cool. 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 You, you can just draw the cool sunglasses on my face. I am so cool. Je suis trop cool. Honnête. Honest. Honnête. Honest. Je vais être honnête avec vous. I'm going to be honest with you. This is one simple sentence you don't want to hear because then something really bad is going to follow that. Tant, tant, tant. Paresseux. Lazy. Lazy. Paresseux. You are very lazy. Vous êtes très paresseux. Paresseux is also uh, the French name for slas. <laughs> oh. I'm very lazy. Je suis très paresseuse. Being lazy is nice. Être paresseux, c'est bien. From time to time. Drôle. Funny. Drôle. Funny. I'm not funny. Je ne suis pas drôle. Of course I'm funny. Bien sûr, je suis drôle. Huh. What's so funny? Qu'est-ce qu'il y a de si drôle? Romantic. 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 I had a romantic weekend. J'ai passé un weekend romantique. A romantic dinner. Un dîner romantique. Un dîner aux quatre chandelles. Is what we call a romantic dinner. Is saying you put up candles and have a nice dinner with your significant other. Hi guys, so romantic. <laughs> Sérieux. Serious. Sérieux. Serious. I'm super serious. <laughs> Je suis super sérieux. Mm. A serious subject. Un sujet sérieux. My teacher is very serious. Mon professeur est très sérieux. Amical, friendly. Amical, friendly. This cat is very friendly. Ce chat est très amical. It's not true. He's just tricking you to give him food and then he will slash your face in your sleep. She is very friendly. Elle est très amicale. Grincheux, bad tempered. Grincheux, bad tempered. This is also the name of the dwarf in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Grincheux is the one that's always grumpy. So you can also say grumpy. So in French is grincheux. My grandma is really bad tempered. Ma grand-mère est très grincheuse. Généreux. Generous. Généreux. Generous. Yeah, sometimes. If you're my friend and you don't have money, then I will pay everything for you. And you don't have to give it back because you're my friend. He was very generous and gave all his money to charity. Il fut très généreux et donna tout son argent à une œuvre de charité. Generous. A generous serving, une portion généreuse, when you get a big amount of food on your plate. Artistic, 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 artistic. This painting is very artistic. Cette peinture est très artistique. Or, better, uh, ce tableau est très artistique. Polly, polite, polly, polite. She is very polite. Elle est très polie. I'm not very polite. Je ne suis pas très poli. I should be more polite. Je devrais être plus poli. Être poli au repas de famille. To be polite during family dinner. Indécis, indecisive. Indécis, indecisive. I'm really indecisive about the next sample sentence. Je suis très indécise à propos de la prochaine phrase. Hmm. I'm really indecise about what I should have for dinner. Je suis très indécise à propos de ce que je devrais manger pour dîner. Because I like food, but I cannot eat too much at night. To be indecisive, être indécis. Gentil, kind. Gentil, kind. C'est très gentil de ta part. This is really kind of you. So it's the end for this week, but if you want to learn more French, visit frenchpod101.com, somewhere around, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Energetic. Energetic. Yeah! 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 Give me an L! Give me a Y! Give me a A! Yeah! I'm also very energetic today. Energetic! Imagine you're at a restaurant in France. What do you do? Bonjour, je suis Candice. Candice here. Anyone can learn how to order food at a restaurant. In this lesson, you'll learn how. Marc, Karen, Marcel and his wife are at a restaurant in France. Let's watch. Vous avez choisi? Je vais prendre un steak frais. Moi, une ratatouille. Moi, le poisson du jour. Pour moi, juste une salade, s'il vous plaît. Et comme boisson Une bouteille de vin blanc, s'il vous plaît. Ce sera tout Oui, merci.
Now, the listen for kiss. Here's how to order food at a restaurant in France. Some places are really popular, especially in the big cities. That's why it's a good idea to make a reservation. If you get on the waiting list, there is a chance someone might cancel and you can get in at the last minute. Reservations are usually made over the phone. Just tell their staff what day, time, and how many people will be in your party. If you feel a little uncomfortable speaking French, you can ask, Parlez-vous anglais? Do you speak English? Most places have staff that speak a little bit. If you are still worried, many places take reservations online or even by fax. Here is how to order food at a restaurant in France. The most important thing to remember is to be polite. It's a good idea to say, Bonjour, s'il vous plaît, and je vous remercie. Hello, please, and thank you. When you are deciding what to order and want to know what the daily special is, you can say, Quel est le plat du jour? What is today's special? Or, if you want the waiter or waitress's recommendation, you can ask, Que recommandez-vous? What do you recommend? Most places have plenty of options for vegetarians and vegans too, so don't worry if you have certain dietary restrictions. If everything looks great and you still don't know what to order, you can say, Je n'ai pas encore choisi. I haven't decided yet. And they'll give you a few more minutes. When you have finally decided, you can use the phrase Je vais prendre, s'il vous plaît. I will take, and add what you would like to order before the words. S'il vous plaît. After giving your order, your waiter might ask you Ce sera tout? Will that be all? So make sure to listen for it. Usually, French waiters and waitresses are really polite and will not interrupt you when you're having dinner. Therefore, if you're ready to get the check, you have to get their attention. Simply say, Excusez-moi, l'addition, s'il vous plaît. Excuse me, the bill, please. Most restaurants in France have a service charge, but the good news is, tipping is more of a courtesy. It is not required and it's not considered rude if you don't tip. If you really liked the service and would like to give the waiter or waitress something, the average is 5 or 10% of the bill. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what is ça and how do you use it? Ça is a pronoun and the informal word for cela which means it or that. Let's practice some expressions so you can learn how to use ça correctly. The expression ça te dit literally means does it say something to you? It's used to ask does that sound good to you? For example, ça te dit d'aller voir un film? Does going to see a film sound good to you? In response, you can say ça ne me dit pas vraiment, which means I don't really feel like doing that. If it does sound good, then you say something like oui or bien sûr, yes or of course, respectively. On the other hand, ça me dit quelque chose, literally, this says something to me, usually means that rings a bell. The opposite will be ça ne me dit rien, literally meaning this doesn't say anything to me or that doesn't ring a bell. Another common expression is Ça alors. It means something like, how about that? And it can be used in both positive and negative ways. For example, a friend tells you he's moving to Senegal. You might respond, ça alors, c'est super. How about that? That's awesome. Here's another scenario. Your friend tells you he has tons of work to do. Then you see him at the beach. You can say, ça alors. How about that? With a negative connotation. You might also hear c'est ça. That means that's it. In the sense of you got it or I got it. Depending on who you're talking about. Ça y est also means that's it. Though it's more along the lines of finally as in ça y est j'ai fini. That's it. Finally I'm done. You can also add ça before c'est to add emphasis. 
For example, c'est beau means it's beautiful. But if someone says ça c'est beau, then they really, really mean it. 10 compliments you always want to hear. Let's go! Vous êtes un ami génial. You're an awesome friend. Vous êtes un ami génial. You are an awesome friend. Well, if you are a friend, you won't be using the polite language with them, so it's more like tu es un ami génial. You are an awesome friend, but more casual with friends. For example, when, when, when your friend just broke up and he is calling you crying, you listen to him a lot and say, oh, tu es un ami génial, merci. You're an awesome friend, thanks. When you know, your friend gives you the birthday present you really wanted, and you're like, wow, oh, you're an awesome friend. Tu es un ami génial. You got the best present ever. Vous avez de bon goût. You have good taste. Vous avez de bon goût. Or you can also say shorter form, vous avez bon goût. You have good taste. If someone comes into your home and it's all nicely decorated and fancy, and this, the guest will be like, oh, vous avez bon goût. You have good taste. Vous avez un grand sens de l'humour. You have a great sense of humor. Vous avez un grand sens de l'humour. You have a great sense of humor. I know, right? Yeah, if you are the joking one at the party and the funny one, the one who will speak and make everyone laugh. And say, oh, vous avez un grand sens de l'humour. Please be tasty with your jokes. Vous êtes magnifique. You look gorgeous. Vous êtes magnifique. You look gorgeous. Well, thank you very much. And you look gorgeous too. Love you, watchers. Beau travail, good job. Beau travail, good job. For learning so much French, good job. If you manage to keep up with all those videos, then you are doing a good job and I'm sure your French is improving every day a tiny bit. Keep it up. Cette veste vous va très bien. That jacket looks nice on you. Cette veste vous va très bien. This jacket looks nice on you. I could have gotten my jacket, but I didn't. Sometimes when you are in the street and someone stops you, Oh, cette veste vous va très bien. Où l'avez-vous trouvé? Oh, this jacket looks nice on you. Where did you find it? And oh, I just bought it for cheap in a second hand shop. It's very unique. Vous êtes encore plus beau de l'intérieur que de l'extérieur. Your inside is even more beautiful than your outside. Vous êtes encore plus beau de l'intérieur que de l'extérieur. Your inside is even more beautiful than your outside. <laughs> well, if you are a really kind person and generous and awesome, then you're also beautiful on the inside. So if you're both beautiful on both sides, you're the best. Vous me donnez envie d'être une meilleure personne. You make me want to be a better person. Vous me donnez envie d'être une meilleure personne. You make me want to be a better person. Ah, oh, that's so nice of you. If you can inspire people, then they will tell you that. Vous êtes doué avec les mots. You have a way with words. Vous êtes doué avec les mots. You have a way with words. If you can convince people and if you talk nicely in a very eloquent manner, you have a way with words. Vous êtes très doué avec les mots. You look really nice and blah blah blah. You have a way with words. Vous êtes très doué avec les mots. Votre sourire est magnifique. Your smile is beautiful. Votre sourire est magnifique. Your smile is beautiful. You're beautiful. If you want to hear that, brush your teeth three times a day. Yeah, when you make someone laugh and they, they smile widely and they are happy, then your smile is beautiful. You can say that. Votre sourire est magnifique. Make them laugh even more. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your French listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Une femme pose des questions sur le système d'emprunt de documents à la librairie. Combien de documents peuvent être empruntés à la fois? Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous me montrer comment emprunter des livres? C'est la première fois que vous venez à cette bibliothèque Oui. Très bien, je vais vous expliquer les règles. Dans cette bibliothèque, vous pouvez emprunter jusqu'à 6 livres et 5 CD ou DVD par personne. Cependant, vous ne pouvez emprunter que jusqu'à 10 documents en tout. 
La période de prêt est de deux semaines et si vous désirez la rallonger, renouvelez-la avant qu'elle n'expire s'il vous plaît. Je peux aussi emprunter des magazines et des journaux Vous ne pouvez pas emprunter de journaux, mais des magazines sont disponibles à part le dernier numéro. Je peux les rapporter par courrier Nous ne pouvons pas accepter de retour par courrier. Venez à la bibliothèque pour les rendre s'il vous plaît. Après la fermeture, vous avez la possibilité de les poser dans cette boîte de retour à côté de l'entrée, mais ne l'utilisez pas si vous avez du retard dans vos emprunts. Je vois. Merci beaucoup. Combien de documents peuvent être empruntés à la fois Une femme pose des questions sur le système d'emprunt de documents à la librairie. Combien de documents peuvent être empruntés à la fois Excusez-moi, pouvez-vous me montrer comment emprunter des livres C'est la première fois que vous venez à cette bibliothèque Oui. Très bien, je vais vous expliquer les règles. Dans cette bibliothèque, vous pouvez emprunter jusqu'à 6 livres et 5 CD ou DVD par personne. Cependant, vous ne pouvez emprunter que jusqu'à 10 documents en tout. La période de prêt est de 2 semaines et si vous désirez la rallonger, renouvelez-la avant qu'elle n'expire s'il vous plaît. Je peux aussi emprunter des magazines et des journaux Vous ne pouvez pas emprunter de journaux, mais des magazines sont disponibles à part le dernier numéro. Je peux les rapporter par courrier Nous ne pouvons pas accepter de retour par courrier. Venez à la bibliothèque pour les rendre s'il vous plaît. Après la fermeture, vous avez la possibilité de les poser dans cette boîte de retour à côté de l'entrée, mais ne l'utilisez pas si vous avez du retard dans vos emprunts. Je vois. Merci beaucoup. 10 words for connecting thoughts. I'm really bad at connecting thoughts, so maybe we can learn things together this time. Let's go. Ensuite, then. Ensuite, then. I took a shower, then went to work. J'ai pris une douche et ensuite je suis allé au travail. My morning routine, what? Cependant, however. Cependant, however, I like the blue version. However, pink also looks good. J'aime la version bleue. Cependant, le rose est aussi joli. Like when you're redecorating your house. De l'autre côté, on the other hand. De l'autre côté, on the other hand. It's sunny today, so we should go outside. On the other hand, it might rain later. Aujourd'hui, il fait soleil, nous devrions sortir. De l'autre côté, il va peut-être pleuvoir un peu plus tard. And, and then your holiday is ruined and you don't get to do sample. Plutôt, instead. Plutôt, instead. Let's go by boat instead. Allons-y plutôt en bateau. Like if you want to go to an island and you can choose between the plane and the boat. Let's go by boat, it's nicer. <laughs> Unless there is a storm and then you get caught in the boat and then you are super sick. Awesome! Oh look, Leah, yeah, we are going to die! Say bye to Pammy and Daddy! <laughs> What? Yeah, there is water in the boat and we are in the middle of nowhere. Oh, That was scary. That's why I don't like being on boats. De plus, moreover, besides. De plus. Moreover, besides, I'm lost in the wood. Moreover, my phone battery is dead. Je suis perdu dans la forêt. De plus, la batterie de mon téléphone est morte. Également, likewise. Également, likewise. I read this book and my sister did likewise. <laughs> J'ai lu ce livre et ma sœur l'a lu également. Aussi, also. Aussi, also. We also have muffins. Nous avons aussi des muffins. Pendant ce temps, meanwhile. Pendant ce temps, meanwhile. J'étais en train de mettre la table et pendant ce temps, le chien a mangé tous les muffins. I was setting the table. Meanwhile, the dog had all the muffins. My doggy. Something tasty, I eat that. En réalité, in fact. En réalité, in fact. The dog didn't eat all the muffins. In fact, I ate them. Le chien n'a pas mangé tous les muffins. En réalité, c'était moi. And they were so good. Finalement. Finally. Finalement. Finally. Nous nous rencontrons finalement. Finally, we meet. Thanks. All my watchers. Snoring. Ten must know autumn vocabulary. Pull. Sweater. Pull. Sweater. As-tu déjà essayé ce pull adorable Have you already tried on this lovely sweater? I mean, we need to be all warm and nice. You know, I'm all big. <laughs> But it's comfy. Plus vieux. 
rainy, pluvieux, rainy. Je dois distribuer les journaux pendant les jours pluvieux et venteux. I have to deliver newspapers on rainy days and windy days. <coughs> Terrible thing. I'm sorry if you have to, it's really painful. And then your clothes get all wet and your hair is messed up. Venteux, windy. Venteux, windy. Demain, il fera froid et venteux, donc porte une écharpe. Tomorrow will be cold and windy, so wear a scarf. Indeed, it can get really windy in autumn, especially in the south part of France, close to Spain. It gets really strong wind. It's so strong it gives you headache and it's known to drive people crazy. And you can get sick pretty easily, so scarves are good. Frais, cool. Frais, cool. Il fait chaud pendant la journée, mais frais la nuit. It's hot during the day, but cool at night. It is indeed. Autumn, autumn. Autumn, autumn. L'automne commence fin septembre. Autumn begins at the end of September. On the 21st of September, it's autumn. And then the leaves get nice. Marron, chestnut. Marron, chestnut. Manger un pancake avec de la crème de marron est délicieux. Eating a pancake with chestnut cream is delicious. Yeah, chestnut cream comes in a really tiny can and it's really dark and sticky and sweet. Chemise à manches longues. Long sleeved shirt. Chemise à manches longues. Long sleeved shirt. C'est bien de porter des chemises à manches longues quand il fait froid. Long sleeved shirt are good for cold weather. Yeah. This and the coat. And a bit more. And another pullover. Manteau. Coat. Manteau. Coat. Mets ton manteau, tu vas attraper un rhume. Put on your coat, you are going to catch a cold. Mm -hmm. Are we warm yet? <laughs> yeah, that's my autumn fashion, I guess. With a, a light coat and a pullover, and then you are so ready to go to autumn. Froid, cold. Froid, cold. Je grelotte, j'ai froid. I'm shivering, I'm cold. <coughs> Maybe you should have worn a warmer coat. Feuille, leaf. Feuille, leaf. Cet arbre a beaucoup de feuilles. This tree has many leaves. Until it's winter and then it doesn't have any anymore. Sad. <laughs> the leaves get so beautiful in autumn with all the colors. Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at frenchpod101.com. Welcome back, watchers. This week we are going to talk about 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Let's go. Il m'a fallu un an seulement pour parler couramment. It took me only one year to become fluent. Il m'a fallu un an seulement pour parler couramment. It took me only one year to become fluent. I would be really amazed if you told me that in French. J'ai parfaitement compris tout ce que vous avez dit. I completely understood everything you said. J'ai parfaitement compris tout ce que vous avez dit. I completely understood everything you said. Nice. Très bien. Very good. J'apprends le français depuis 10 ans. I've been learning French for 10 years. J'apprends le français depuis 10 ans. I've been learning French for 10 years. And it took you only one year to become fluent. Nice. Ten years is a long way to go, but it may be the time you need to learn a language properly, actually. J'apprends le français par moi-même. I'm learning French all by myself. J'apprends le français par moi-même. I'm learning French all by myself. All by myself. I'm learning French all by... Now you're learning French with me. Je parlerai français comme un locuteur natif dans trois ans. I speak French like a native speaker in three years. Je parlerai français comme un locuteur natif dans trois ans. I'll speak French like a native speaker in three years. Good luck with that. Je peux mémoriser environ 50 nouveaux mots français par jour. I can memorize around 50 new French words a day. Je peux mémoriser environ 50 nouveaux mots français par jour. 
I can memorize around 50 new French words a day. Wow, that's amazing, yeah. That's really amazing. So yeah, if you told me that in French, I would be amazed. Je peux regarder des films français sans sous-titres. I can watch French movies without subtitles. Je peux regarder des films français sans sous-titres. I can watch French movies without subtitles. Man, and this is also really good. And it's a really good way to learn as well. So do it whenever you can. You can try by starting to watch Le Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie Poulain. It's a very famous French movie. Je sais aussi parler quelques autres langues à part le français. Apart from knowing French, I can speak a few other languages as well. Je sais aussi parler quelques autres langues à part le français. <laughs> Apart from knowing French, I can speak another few languages as well. Good job! I bet you can also speak English! <gasps> That's already two languages! Le français est amusant et facile à apprendre. French is fun and easy to learn. Le français est amusant et facile à apprendre. French is fun and easy to learn! Well, I'm glad you enjoy it, and I hope you will continue to enjoy the lessons with me as well. <laughs> Merci, mais en fait, je ne suis pas un locuteur natif. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. Merci, mais en fait, je ne suis pas un locuteur natif. <laughs> Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. Wow. If someone tells you this, it means not only you're really good at speaking French, but you also got no accent at all. And it's the end. So don't forget to subscribe to learn more French. And what's the best sentence you can say in French? Amaze me in the comments. And we'll see you next time. See you guys and girls and watchers and kittens. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, how can I use French slang? There are a lot of words you hear in French that you'll almost never see written. In fact, there are many expressions that are unique to spoken French. Take quoi at the end of a sentence, for example. Quoi in spoken French doesn't just mean what. When used at the end of a sentence, it's a filler word that adds emphasis. If you're talking about something with your friend and she says, c'est normal quoi, she isn't asking a question. In English, it would sound something like, this is quite normal. She's emphasizing how average or usual the situation is. A very popular slang word among young people is genre. It can be translated to the filler word like in English. For example, c'était genre trop bien would be it was like amazing. Another common word that's used differently in spoken slang is se casser, which means to go separate ways or to split up. Say you're at lunch with some friends and you have another appointment to go to. You might say on se casse to signal the end of the get-together. The closest equivalent would be, let's get out of here. However, be careful when you use it, because it can come off as a little rude. On a similar note, casse-toi means get lost, which can be mean or playful, so be careful with this one too. Let's look at some words you'll usually only use in conversation. Un boulot is literally a job. Boulot comes from the French verb boulotter, which means to work with secrecy. Its nuance is more of what I do to get by, rather than what I do for a living, which would be le travail. Un petit boulot, or sometimes just un boulot, is a part-time or a job. Un bouquin is the casual word for a book. Bouquin comes from the Dutch book, which also means book and has a similar pronunciation. France has a strong academic culture and informal discussions over books happen often. So many people use bouquin in more casual settings instead of livre, which is the formal way to say book. The word buffet means to scarve down food when you're really hungry and not paying attention to your manners. 
It's not an insult though. Everyone understands the need to buffet sometimes, especially after a long, hard day of work. However, because of France's vibrant culinary culture, buffet isn't a word you'll come across in polite circles. Ouf is an interjection you'll hear often. It means you're relieved after you've done or gone through something crazy. You can use it as an adjective too, like c'est ouf when you're talking about a crazy situation. It most closely translates to that's sick or simply that's crazy. You can even describe a person as un ouf, which means someone who's lost his mind. Ouf actually comes from Verlan, which is a pattern of slang in French. We'll talk about that more in another lesson. Here are a couple more common slang words. Kiffer means to dig something or to like something. Dingue means crazy, either in a good way or a bad way. Another one is chiant, a vulgar slang word which means really annoying. How was it? Go ahead and try them out. At your own risk, of course. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. A bientôt, see you soon. Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, when do you use the direct object pronouns le, la, and les, versus the indirect object pronouns lui and leur? Sometimes you want to shorten a sentence with a pronoun rather than use the same noun again. This is similar to how we use it in English. In place of nouns, we have already said, such as Did you see that movie yesterday? Yes, I saw it. In French, pronouns come right before a verb to simplify a sentence. For example, if your friend asks you, tu aimes ce roman? Do you like this novel? Instead of, oui, j'aime ce roman. Yes, I like this novel. You might say, oui, je l'aime. Yes, I like it. In this case, you put the pronoun after the subject, je, and before the verb, aimer. But how do you know which pronoun to use? Le, la, and le are used with nouns that are directly attached to the verb. That means you don't need the preposition à. For example, aimer, meaning to like, is one of those verbs. For aimer, we use the L apostrophe in the singular because aimer begins with a vowel. In this case, je l'aime. In the plural, we would use les. So if you were referring to several novels, you'd say, je les aime. Here's another example. La porte est ouverte, je la ferme. The door is open, I'm closing it. La, here refers to la porte, the door, which is feminine. Here's one in the masculine. Someone says, le document est sur la table. The document is on the table. You respond, je ne le trouve pas, I can't find it, or I don't find it. Le, before trouve, refers to le document. Lui and leur, on the other hand, are usually only for people, not things. Verbs that use lui and leur use the preposition à. The most common example is probably parler. For example, Je parle souvent à ma sœur. I speak often with my sister. Becomes, je lui parle souvent. Here, lui, which would be similar to the English, with her, refers to ma sœur, which would be my sister. If you're talking about more than one person, you would use leur. I am talking to my brothers, would be je parle à mes frères. With the pronoun, it will become je leur parle, meaning I am talking to them. In the common form, you put the pronoun after the verb with a hyphen. 
that applies to both forms of pronouns. So tell them the truth would be dis-leur la vérité. Another example in the comment form is the door is open, close it. La porte est ouverte, ferme-la. Did you get it? Not so bad, right? If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I try to answer them. À bientôt, see you soon. So welcome back to French Weekly Words and this week is going to be 10 lines you need for introducing yourself. Here we go. Comment t'appelles-tu? What's your name? Bonjour, comment t'appelles-tu? Hello, what's your name? Es-tu déjà allé en France? Have you been to France? So yeah, people will be like, es-tu déjà allé en France? And then you can answer, no, it's my first time. So non, c'est ma première fois. Comment vas-tu? How are you? How are you doing? Comment vas-tu? When you meet someone in the morning, like, hey, hi, how are you doing? Hey, salut, comment vas-tu? Or, comment ça va? Usually when you're speaking with friends, it's comment ça va. So, hey, comment ça va? Ça va bien. Something like that. Aimes-tu la cuisine française? Do you like French food? Come on, everyone likes French food. It's the bestest in the world. So tell me in the comment if you like French food and what's your favorite French food because we got plenty of it. My favorite French food is croissant. You can have them for breakfast. They are buttery and yummy and crunchy and everything. C'est quand votre anniversaire? When is your birthday? This one is quite polite, and if you want to use a less formal version, it would be C'est quand ton anniversaire? My birthday is Mon anniversaire est... D'où venez-vous? Where are you from? I'm from France! <laughs> so, d'où venez-vous? Where are you from? Well, obviously I'm from France. <laughs> Where are you from? Où as-tu appris le français? Where did you learn French? on frenchpod101.com that's what you are here so if you are really good and speak french to people pretty easily they will be like oh, où as-tu appris le français where do you learn french tell them you watch Lia's video où habitez-vous where do you live where do you guys live so yeah if you are traveling to france this will also be a question you will commonly be asked so où habitez-vous i live in america Où sont les toilettes? Where is the bathroom? This is an important sentence to know when you are going to a restaurant or wherever in the metro. Don't go to the toilet in the metro because first you have to pay for it, then it's super dirty. Toilette in French is a plural noun because you have to look for many toilets before finding one that's clean. That's what we say in French. So yeah, don't hesitate to ask, but maybe you will be surprised. Où sont les toilettes? Où travaillez-vous? Where do you work? Or, où travailles-tu? For the more casual version. Je travaille en tant que designer. I work as a designer. This is fancy to say. So, just go with it. Yeah. So, that's it for this week. Don't forget to subscribe, wherever it is. And go to the website to learn more French. See you next time. Bye. Nice, 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 baby. Hi, everybody. Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher when I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what does C mean and how do you use it? C has two main meanings. The first meaning is if, and the second one is yes, but only to negative questions. Let's go over if first. If you want to say, if you come to the party, Madeleine will come too. You use C. Si tu viens à la fête, Madeleine vient aussi. A common expression using si is si tu veux, meaning if you want. For example, si tu veux, on y va ensemble. If you want, we'll go there together. Note that if you use si with il or il plural, you abbreviate it to seal and seal to avoid repeating the same letter. So with il, the expression is s'il veut, je peux cuisiner. If he wants, I can cook. The other meaning of si is a little trickier, but I'm sure you'll get it in no time. You know questions that have negative phrasing like won't you be cold or aren't you coming? 
In English, if your answer is yes, you'd say something like yes, I'm coming or actually yes, I will be called. In French, yes in response to a negative question is different from a yes to a positive question. Are you coming or tu viens is a positive question. If you answer yes, you would answer oui. On the other hand, if someone asks you aren't you coming and your answer is still yes, then you would say si. Tu ne viens pas chez nous? Aren't you coming over to our place? Is a negative question, so you'd respond si je viens, yes, I'm coming. In a way, si puts yes and no into one word. It's kind of like saying no, what you just say is wrong, but yes, I'm agreeing. Here are a couple more examples. Il ne va pas nettoyer la cuisine? Isn't he going to clean the kitchen? And si, il va la nettoyer. Yes, he'll clean it. Or this one. Tu n'es pas malade? Aren't you sick? And si, mais c'est un petit rhume. Yes, but it's a small cold. How was it? Did I help clear things up? If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. À bientôt! Hi everybody, Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, when and how do you use en? En is a pronoun that you use to replace a noun. This is to make your sentences shorter and easier to say. It's used in three ways. First, en can be used as a pronoun in place of uncountable nouns or indefinite plural nouns. Let's dive into some examples so you can learn how to use en correctly. Let's look at this short conversation. One person says, tu achètes des pommes, meaning, are you buying apples? The other responds, oui, j'en achète un kilo, meaning, Yes, I'm buying one kilogram of them. Here, en refers to des pommes or apples. It's simpler than saying, oui, j'achète un kilo de pommes. Yes, I'm buying one kilogram of apples. We also use en for uncountable nouns like water, de l'eau, or milk, du lait. For example, if someone asks you, tu veux de l'eau? meaning, do you want some water? You can reply, oui, j'en veux bien, merci, meaning, yes, I would like some, thank you. The second use of en is as a pronoun for verbs that use the preposition de. For example, avoir envie de, meaning, to feel like, conseiller de, to advise, and se servir de, to make us off. So, if a friend asks you, Tu veux aller voir un film? Do you want to go see a film? But you're not really in the mood. You can respond, Je n'en ai pas envie. I don't feel like it. The third way you can use en is as a preposition to describe something. For example, une veste en cuir is a leather jacket. Literally, this is une veste, a jacket, en cuir, in leather. Here, En is used to describe what the noun, in this case, jacket, is made of. Another example would be if you ask a shop clerk at a clothing store the question, Est-ce que vous avez cette veste en bleu? Which means, do you have this jacket in blue? In this example, en is used to describe the color of the jacket. That's it for now. I hope that makes more sense now. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I try to answer them. A bientôt! Welcome back, watchers! This week we are going to talk about 10 reasons to learn French. I don't know them either, so let's discover them together. Let's go! C'est une langue magnifique. It's a beautiful language. Ooh, ah. Oh, le français est une langue magnifique. It sounds so poetic and artsy. Doesn't it? J'adore apprendre les langues, tout simplement. I just love learning languages. That's true. And French can be quite a challenge, so yeah, try it. 
J'adore la culture et les gens qui parlent la langue. I love the culture and the people who speak the language. French culture is really rich and old and French people are quite unique. So let's discover them together with the French language. J'aimerais comprendre mes chansons, films et émissions de télévision préférées. I want to understand my favorite songs, movies and TV shows. Yeah, French television can be quite funny and a lot of the jokes are made out of puns. So if you understand the French language, you can really enjoy them more than just with subtitles. So in the evening, we have a lot of uh, French TV series or French news uh, with newscasters uh, that are really satirical and are quite funny to watch. So maybe try those. Ma famille vient d'un endroit où l'on parle la langue. My family comes from a place where the language is spoken. Somehow you move to some places and you want to learn the origin of your language. It's nice to be speaking two languages. La langue est utile pour mon travail. The language is useful for my job. La langue est utile pour mon travail. The language is useful for my job. So yeah, again, if you're planning to work in France, a lot of people don't speak English or in the workplace, you really need to speak French. C'est mon passe-temps. It's my hobby. It's a nice hobby to learn languages. And yeah, again, if you are looking for a challenge, French may be a right place to start. <laughs> Because you can still read it, but speaking it is quite difficult. Enjoy your French hobby with me. And learn a lot of French with French Point 101. Cela fait partie de mes études universitaires. It's part of my university studies. So if you are studying, don't forget to watch a lot of series without the subtitles and a lot of books or newspapers, magazines, and watch a lot of TV to get the pronunciation right. J'apprends la langue pour impressionner quelqu'un. I'm learning the language to impress someone. J'apprends la langue pour impressionner quelqu'un. I'm learning the language to impress someone. <laughs> I want to impress you by speaking French. Why not? I would be really impressed if someone not native French could speak French properly because it's really hard. Who do you want to impress with French? Is it a girl or a boy? Parce que j'aime la nourriture. Because I like the food. Parce que j'aime la nourriture française. Because I love French food. And you want to read them on the menu properly and order them in French by yourself and enjoy all the delicious food France has to offer. That would be a nice reason. This is a reason to learn French. Tarte au citron. Taste so lemony. And the dough is super good too. It's crunchy. Have a little bite of French. Nyam, 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 nyam. Ah. So that's all for this week. We'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos and check the website for more French. See you. Hi, everybody. Candice here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher where I answer your most common French questions. The question for this lesson is, what are the main differences between written and spoken French? Written French and spoken French can seem completely different. A lot of grammar is relaxed in spoken French, so sometimes you might have trouble recognizing a phrase even if you already know it. For instance, Abbreviations are extremely common in spoken French. It goes beyond dropping the E of je in front of voyeurs such as j'ai, which is I have, or l'année, which is the year. Among the most common spoken abbreviation is t for tu es, which means you are. So instead of tu es joli for you cute, you hear t'es joli. Similarly, tu as you have, is often shortened to ta. Another common omission is the ne in negative sentences. In writing, the correct way to say I have no money is je n'ai pas d'argent. In casual spoken French, you can just say j'ai pas d'argent. Here's another example. Ce n'est pas grave means no problem or it's not a big deal. Spoken We usually say, c'est pas grave, when people talk quickly. It can even sound like, c'est pas grave, so you might not even hear the C. One more example is, je ne peux pas, meaning, I can't, can become, je peux pas, 
but we can make it shorter and more casual by dropping the E. Je peux pas. Some grammatical structures are more common in spoken French too. For instance, questions are usually shorter and more direct. Instead of saying the full qu'est-ce que tu as fait for what did you do, you probably hear t'as fait quoi, which literally translates to you did what? Another common spoken sentence structure is adding a pronoun at the beginning for emphasis. For example, if you want to emphasize your personal opinion, you could say moi je pense, literally that means me, I think. In English, it's something like has for me. Here's another example. If you're talking about your family's plans for the weekend, you can add nous for emphasis. Nous, nous allons à la plage. Us or us for us. We're going to the beach. There we go. I hope that clears things up. In another lesson, we'll go over le verlan, which is a form of French spoken slang. If you have other questions, please leave them in the comments and I try to answer them. À bientôt. Hi, watchers. Today we are going to learn to respond to the question, how are you? So if anyone is asking you how you're doing or how are you, here are some answers you can give them. Let's start. First one is, je vais bien. I'm fine. How are you in French is, comment vas-tu? Comment vas-tu? Je vais bien. So how are you? Oh, I'm fine. J'ai sommeil. I'm sleepy. Comment vas-tu? Ah, j'ai sommeil. Sommeil. So how are you today? Ah, I'm sleepy. J'ai trop travaillé hier et maintenant j'ai sommeil. I worked too hard yesterday and now I'm sleepy. Je suis fatigué. I'm tired. Je n'ai pas beaucoup dormi hier soir et maintenant je suis fatigué. I didn't sleep well last night and now I'm tired. Mew, twice. Je pète la forme. I'm great. Je pète la forme. This is um, literally it means I break the shape. It's when you are super great and in super strong shape and feeling amazing. Woo! <laughs> Comment ça va? Ça va super! So, how are you doing? I'm great! Or I'm doing awesome! Je me sens mal. I'm feeling bad. So, for example, when you ate something bad and then you say, ah, I ate something weird and no, I'm feeling bad. J'ai mangé quelque chose de mauvais et maintenant je me sens mal. When you are feeling dizzy, it also works. Ça va pas mal. I'm not bad. It's when you are doing so so. Like, how are you doing? Ah, ça va pas mal. I mean, I'm not doing well, but I'm not going too bad, so... Meh. Et vous? And you? So if you want to be more casual with someone, you can ask, uh, et toi? And you? So, oh, comment ça va? Ça va bien, et toi? How are you doing? I'm fine, and you? Merci d'avoir demandé. Thank you for asking. So, comment ça va? Ah, oh, ça va pas mal, merci d'avoir demandé. Ah, oh, how are you doing? Oh, it's not bad, thank you for asking. Well, it's a polite way to end the conversation, maybe. Instead of going, ah, oh, how are you doing? Fine and you, fine and you, fine and you. Comment allez-vous ces derniers temps? How have you been doing recently? This is also quite formal. You can hear a lot of old people asking this way. So, oh, comment allez-vous ces derniers temps? How have you been recently? Ah! Je suis triste. I'm feeling sad. Mon chat vient de mourir et je me sens triste. My, my cat just died and I'm feeling sad. And then you get a good pat on the back and you can ask for cake. That would be nice. I like asking for cake when I'm sad. Chocolate ones. I like chocolate. <laughs> so that's it for this week, watchers. So tell me how are you feeling in the comments. And don't forget to check French Pod 101 for more lessons. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. No, everyone tells me it's not house, a house, and I just cannot do it. So, how are you? Chocolate cake, chocolate cake. So, welcome back, watchers. So, this time we are going to talk about 10 phrases you never want to hear. Last time we did the one you wanted to hear, and this time let's be negative. Ce n'est pas toi, c'est moi. It's not you, it's me. Ce n'est pas toi, c'est moi. It's not you, it's me. 
Usually I'm the one saying that and I'm saying it's not me, it's you. And yes, I mean it this way. Désolé, j'avais oublié. Sorry, I forgot. Désolé, j'avais oublié. Sorry, I forgot. But you mean face. When you are phoning someone, you're like, hey, where are you? Ah, désolé, j'avais oublié. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Whoopsie! Il faut qu'on parle. We need to talk. Il faut qu'on parle. We need to talk. This one is scary. You really don't want to hear that. <laughs> what did I do again? Don't worry about it too much. There was this famous uh, French commercial that goes, Il faut qu'on parle. We need to talk. My body is growing. Like, mon corps est en pleine croissance. It was an advertising for water for children because they need to drink more water. And the kids were like, Il faut qu'on parle. Je n'ai pas tes sous aujourd'hui. I don't have your money today. Je n'ai pas tes sous aujourd'hui. I don't have your money today. Dude! If I lend you money, I expect it back. Je te l'avais dit. I told you so. Je te l'avais dit. I told you so. This is a sentence I like saying, but I don't like hearing it if it's for me. Huh, I told you so. I know, it's okay. Merci pour votre CV. Cependant, le poste a été pourvu. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. Merci pour votre CV. Cependant, le poste a été pourvu. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. So yeah, sorry you've been rejected. Happens. Nous devrions voir d'autres personnes. We should see other people. Nous devrions voir d'autres personnes. We should see other people. Come on, you got eyes. You see other people all around you. We don't need that. Do we? Do we? So does it mean it's over? Tu as pris du poids récemment? Have you gained weight recently? Tu as pris du poids récemment? Have you gained weight recently? Mean! I work out every day, but if I hear this, I work out more. Tu as un cheveu blanc. You have a gray hair. Tu as un cheveu blanc. You have a gray hair. Uh, gray is gris and cheveu blanc is actually white hair. It hurts the same. Yeah, I'm getting older. When I see a gray hair, I'm like, ah, plank. So no one will ever tell me this. So sad. Vous êtes renvoyé. You are fired. Vous êtes renvoyé. You are fired. Yeah, I guess if you don't have another job or other ideas to work on, this can be a bummer. And then you go back to the sentence, I'm sorry, the position has been filled. <laughs> So it's the end for this week, don't forget to subscribe and tell us in the comments what you wouldn't really want to hear. See you next time!